Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to take a look at the first of the three possible cases that we can uh, that we can run into in the case we have what we call damped oscillatory motion. And the first case we're going to take a look at is the overdamped case, the case where B squared is much greater than 4mk. Now remember that m is the mass and k is the spring constant. If B is a very large quantity, what that means is that there's a lot of resistance to the motion in this damping effect. There's a large dampening effect. And because of that, if you then displace the mass, even though the mass may be large and K may be large, if B is very large, it's going to take a long time for the mass to get back to the equilibrium point. So looking at this equation here, since this is a general equation, the general solution to the differential equation describing this motion, you can then take a look here at each of these exponents. Notice that if B squared is larger than 4MK, this will become a positive quantity. And so now we have B divided by 2M minus this quantity, which is positive. But this will always be less than this, which means that this will be a positive quantity. So let me, let's see here. I have a red pen. So this will always be a positive quantity. Coming back over here, notice since this is greater than 0 and this is greater than 0, this will also be a positive quantity. Comparing those two exponents to one another, notice that this will be a larger exponent than this one because here they're added and there's, these are subtracted from one another. And matter of fact, if B is very large compared to 4MK, uh, or B squared is very large compared to 4MK, then this can be pretty well ignored, the 4MK portion, and then it'll basically B over 2M minus B over 2M, which is almost zero. So this exponent will become very small if B gets very large. So if B gets very large, the exponent gets very small. In this case, if B gets very large, the exponent gets large. So if B gets large, the exponent gets large. So understanding that now, coming back over here, uh, we want to interpret that. You can see that there's no oscillatory motion at all. These are simply decaying exponentials. This will cause, since the exponent here is very small, the decay will be very small. And since this is a larger exponent, the decay will be larger, and then they're added together. So what you'll end up with is you'll end up with something that kind of looks like this. So initially, you'll have a very small decay. Then the decay will just tend to increase, and then it'll kind of level off over time like this. And eventually, it'll go back to the equilibrium point. It may take a while, but you'll eventually get there. So this would, would be the displacement x versus the time t. That's what we mean by uh, we have overdamping. So the, the only thing left here to understand is that the larger b becomes, the longer it will take for the equilibrium point to be reached. So this would then represent b uh, becoming larger. And if b becomes smaller, even though you may still have an overdamped case with smaller b's, then what will happen is, and I'll use a dotted approach here, you'll have a faster decay, and so there would be B uh, being smaller. Yeah. And eventually, if B becomes small enough, you get to the point where B now will become equal, or B squared will become equal to 4MK. In that case, you'll have what we call the critical damped case. That means you'll get back to the equilibrium point the fastest without potentially overshooting and having an oscillatory motion like this. So typically then, as the B gets smaller and smaller and smaller, you'll get back to the equilibrium point faster and faster and faster, and eventually, when it becomes too small, when B squared becomes smaller than 4MK, 4MK, then you begin to oscillate. And that's how you want to look at these different solutions. So this is the first case, the overdamp case, and so depending upon how large B becomes, either take you a longer or shorter time to get to the equilibrium point, and that, of course, depends upon the size of these exponents. And notice that this exponent will will hold back the, the, the mass going back to the equilibrium point because as B becomes very large compared to 4MK, then the, basically this exponent becomes zero, and so you'll have kind of a constant term. This constant term will just kind of hold back the return to the equilibrium point the larger B becomes, and that's due to the, the way that this exponent is set up. And that's how you look at overdamped cases.